How are you doing folks? Welcome to another episode of Yoga Day's Hobby Corner. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Elder Sign and we're going to do an unboxing or a sort of unboxing because I've already unboxed it. Um, back in a minute. Uh, anyway folks, as I said, talking about Elder Sign, we're going to do an unboxing though I have technically unboxed it at this point um, but I haven't played it yet so this is still an unboxing um, it's by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, it was designed by Rich Lanius and Kevin Wilson. It's for one to eight players um, for 14 and up. There's a reason for that. It's a horror game. You don't want anyone young playing it because they might have nightmares. You might have nightmares anyway playing it, but um, there's an obvious reason why they do it because people might phone up and say, Oh, my 10 year old play this and they had nightmares. Well, 10 year old really shouldn't be playing it because it says for 14 and up. Um, so it's uh, in the Arkham Horror Files series of games, um, basically based on the Cthulhu Mrs. Mythos by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, it's a dice based game, um, you get the custom dice, as happens with pretty much every Fantasy Flight game, it comes with its own custom dice um, for that particular game for the most part. Um, so in it, you get your rule book, you get your cardboard clock, which you have to put together, which I haven't yet because I haven't played it yet. Um, you get dice, um, you get all the cards that you need, um, you get stamina, all the tokens that you need for it as well. Um, so basically, in this, um, throughout the museum, you're in, going into a museum, throughout the museum's history, visitors have been drawn to its unparalleled collection, ancient exhibits, exhibits and exotic curios from faraway places but 1926 unimaginable horrors from beyond threatened to use these artifacts as means to enter our world bringing an end to all humanity the clock is striking midnight and a small group of courageous investigators desperately search the marble tolls for the legendary symbol that will keep our world safe the elder sign um so basically in each game of elder sign you pick, uh, or at random, uh, um, an elder, uh, an ancient one, um, from the Cthulhu mythos. So it could be Cthulhu himself, um, it could be the nameless one, it could be a number of different... Um, I think there's eight or ten, or I can't remember off the top of my head how many elders there are, uh, ancient ones there are. They're here somewhere. Um, but you pick a random one of them and depending on how difficult and how easy they are to uh, to defeat it, it changes every time you play because you're going to use different investigators every time you're going to get different cards for the, the rooms every time and you're going to have an elder, a different um, ancient one I keep on calling them elders but a different ancient one probably every, every couple of um, games you might have the same uh, elder one or ancient one but um, so basically the aim of the game is to pick up as much elder sign as you require to defeat the, the ancient one before they're released um, so I'm going to turn the camera around um, this is actually the second time I have tried to record this unboxing. Unfortunately, the first time I recorded it, um, my dog Zach knocked over the um, tripod that I was using to hold the camera up, um, and I missed half of what I was trying to get, um, and that's him messing about in the house now as well. Uh, you can hear his wee feet pounding on the floor. Um, it's lovely, really, so when he's been a pain in the butt. Um, so we're going to um, go through the rules with these and might do a little um, demonstration of how uh, a turn might go. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around, be back in a minute. Stop shouting, Zach. Zach, stop it. So, this is the box, 
So in it, you get this kind of thing in every fantasy flight um, set of rules, at least the ones that I've come across, and this is an updated one, because it's got the Keyforge um, card game, um, so that's quite interesting um, from what I've seen of it, um, and then it goes through all the various games that they do. Um, you obviously get the set of rules, um, you get this wee pamphlet for the... Um, mobile game and then as you can see I have not played it yet because this is all wrapped still in cellophane so this is how all the counters you get for like enemies and um, investigators um, and all the elder sign counters and stamina counters and um, main counters and then everything that you need to um, to play the game is in all the tokens you need. So you have sanity and stamina tokens, you have um, mask monitor, monster markers, then you get monster markers, you get clue tokens, doom tokens, elder sign tokens, you've got the clock, which is there, which along with bits in there, um, make the clock, you go. So this, uh, the rule book, has your component over you, such so your clock, Clock hand plus the connector, the entrance sheet, all the dice, your ancient one cards, investigator cards and markers, your adventure cards, other world cards, common unique and spell cards, ally cards, mythos cards, sanity and stamina tokens, clock clue tokens, as I said, the wall was going through, which is on all the, all the tokens that are on this. So as you go through the rules, they're fairly um, self explanatory, you get your setup, so prepare your clock and entrance. Choose your ancient one, so you randomly choose an ancient one. Um, prepare monster cop, so all the monster counters go into a cup, so whether or not you've got a dice cup or like a um, mug or whatever, you just put them in and you, whenever you need them, you pull them out random. So you prevail the adventure, so you get the adventure deck and put it in two rows of three cards and face down. Um, face up and then shuffle the other world deck and um, place both decks face down the other row of face up adventures when an adventure card shows a locked at die icon that appropriate die place that appropriate die into that card so if that die is locked it can be used on any card doesn't matter um, so you press items and spells so just gather them up and shuffle them together um, and place in there the adventure deck, prefer your tokens, so Elder Sign, Doom Sanity, Clue and Stamina tokens at piles. Keep them within easy reach and distribute investigators so you can randomly draw investigators or you can choose them. So after that each player takes its corresponding investigator marker and number of stamina and sanity tokens, his or her. Um, determining your first player by shuffling the chosen is to get markers and randomly well choosing one and then resolve an initial mythos card so um, is the mythos cards they do have the mythos cards somewhere ah the mythos cards so you, obviously you've got those cards as well that you've got to shuffle together and, um, so it says if the text just got to go wrong text of a card or a monster marker conflicts with the rules in the book the card or marker text takes precedence and then because it's, it, this, this is important it's a all proof game so sharing information I know a lot of players who have never played a cooperative game before um, it's difficult for them to get out of the mindset of you know I, I'm against the other opponents uh, other players I've seen it before um, it's a good way a good thing to point out to players that it's a cooperative game we've all got to share information um, and all of this that kind of stuff so as it says before the beginning of the game players should read the text on the ancient one card they've chosen this text explains important information about the ancient one such as the number of elder signs required to steal it away from steal it away it's an attack ability used when battling the ancient one and various information unique to the ancient one so all this the cards have all this and it's got the, the little diagram to show you um, so in a player's turn player's turn um, you get your movement face you move wherever you're moving 
Um, you get resolution phase, which you resolve. Like if you're on an adventure card and a mythos card, you know, a mythos card, the other world card, you resolve the card, and then you get the clock phase, which you advance the clock. Um, so, um, this has got the anatomy of a card. You get your move, how you resolve a task um, or a, an adventure card um, is dependent on the symbols on it. Um, and on what it requires you to um, to do in order to resolve it. There's also some of them that have an order where you have to resolve it, so you can't just resolve it. Yeah. When you roll the dice, for instance, this one has the three skulls. It's also got a green dice that needs to be locked, so you lose a green dice. Um, so you've got those three skulls that... Um, you roll your dice to see if you get the three skulls. Now this one doesn't really matter because there's three skulls, but you decide which order you um, you resolve it. Because if you roll a single skull, you can put it there and you don't lose any dice. But if you roll a dice and you don't get any skulls, you have to and you don't resolve it with this one. You lose the dice, so you're better off using that skull and then moving on so as it says it's got rolling the dice um, so completing sta tasks losing stamina and insanity so it's got rolling the dice completing tasks so that's a complete task example get terror effects um, so that's fails to complete a task and at least one of the rolls roll shows a terror it resolves all terror effects on the adventure card so if it's got terror events on the the card the because it's got some of them will get terror effects and tells you what happens so um so these are the difference you get investigation lower peril and terror that's the dice you roll um some of them you require you to use terror in order to complete them so um so losing stamina is there some tasks require you to lose your, your stamina and your sanity um but obviously if it would reduce you to zero, you can't do it. Um, if the player is unable or unwilling to use his die results to satisfy any task requirements, rolls can take the failed roll. Must discard one of the dice of his choice and from the dice pool and roll the remaining dice. Um, so discard the dice is no longer part of the dice pool. So once you lose one, you can't bring it back. Um, so resolving an adventure, when all tasks of the adventure are completed, the player successfully resolves the adventure. So... And um, returns all investigate markers on the card to the entrance sheet. He also turns all assigned and discarded dice to the dice pool. So that resolved card goes into the resolved pair, and then he gets his rewards or penalties. So you could get a monster, um, or you can get common item, unique item, spells, clues, allies. You get elder sign, um, you get a gate. So that's for each icon draw a top card from the other old deck and fit, place it for yourself below the adventure cards and then you get doom so if you fail and you get a doom it brings the elder the ancient one closer to being um, brought up so other world cards special type of adventure cards that represent gates to other dimensions these cards I in play only after a player ends a gate reward when other other world cards enter play Place it below the six adventure cards. Any number of other world cards may be played at once after resolving. Another other world card do not place it. Right, so you've got your entrance sheet. So this is your entrance sheet. So it's got receive first aid, search lost and found, um, and buy a souvenir. So if you've got a true fit trophy, you can get a clue token. If two trophies, you can common item. Three trophies, unique item. Four trophies, spell. Five trophies, an, an ally. If you get ten trophies, you can get an elder sign. So it's also got search lost and found. So you can gain a clue token, gain a common item, gain a spell um, for rolling on a green dice, uh, or you lose either stam sanity or stamina. And then you can receive first aid. So you pay your trophies to regain four, four trophies to fully regain both stamina, stamina and sanity. So, you know, if obviously, you know, at the end of your, if you complete an adventure, you go back to the uh, the museum entrance and you can regain your um, 
Ben. Your um, your stamina and your everything. So, player hand advances the clock by three hours. So, depending on how many players you've got, each player advances it for three hours. So, depending on how many players you've got. So, uh, potentially, we're playing a game at Falkirk potentially on Monday. Uh, well, no, we're not playing on Monday at this moment, but potentially there could be five players or six players in that game. Um, so, to go through three complete revolutions of the group would take, um, or two complete resolutions of the group would take two days or three days even. So, um, at, at that point, but even if it was only five players, you've still got a day and another three hours. And every time um, it goes to midnight, you resolve a mythos um, card, I believe. I was reading that the other day. Um, So once you've completed your turn, you go in the clock phase. Uh, yeah, so the clock hand moves to 12 midnight strikes after the current player's clock phase is end. Player draws one Mythos card and resolves several game effects, so it's midnight. So when midnight strikes, um, you resolve the Mythos cards. So myth Mythos card... Each time midnight strikes, players draw on one new Mythos card and return the old card immediately face down to the bottom of the deck. Each Mythos card has one immediate effect and one lingering effect. Immediate effect is printed in the card's upper half and occurs immediately and draws the card. After drawing the card, lingering effect printed on the old card's lower effect. This effect applies as long as the card remains face up. So on this one, um, strange sex and monster appears of a poisonous trap. Next time the clock strikes midnight, all investigate all those loose tats to stamina. So, um, obviously, you know, as and when things come up, you, it gets, you go through it and you go, right, okay, this happens, that happens, the next thing happens. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you everything that comes in the box that I haven't already showed you. So, obviously, you've got these, but, so, so you've got your Elder one, or your Ancient one, cards, your Adventurer cards, these are the, or the Investigator cards, these are the Adventure cards, um, There is quite a number of adventure cards, as you can see, um, and there, there's a ton of them. These are the Ancient One cards, and these are the, um, so these are the Ancient One cards, um, and these are the other world cards, so, you know. It's the same as with the adventure cards. You've got to score these dice, and then you get these. Or if you don't, you get the, you know you lose this. Um, so as a as a as a as a thought, I can't even say that right. Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he's only at twelve doom. So he's really he's at twelve doom. So it's really easy to. It's not really easy for him to appear, but you need to get full 14 Elder Sign to put him down. Um, so it says, absolute destruction. If Azathoth awakens, the game ends and the investigators lose. So his attack is that. Some of them you can you can awake them, but you can still beat them. Um, right, they awaken, but you can still beat them. Um, 
So with Haster, every time an investigator successfully resolves another roll card, add one Doom token to the Doom track. So even though you're getting three Elder Sign for that, for uh, Rylith, you're still adding uh, an Elder Sign, or a, a Doom token to the Doom track. And with 11 Doom, it's not... That's when I watch the... Um, what do you call it? The tabletop um, episode, Haster was the one I think that came out. Um, for them I can't remember actually off the top of my head um, so it's all these different um, characters from for, um, ancient ones from the Cthulhu Mesothos including Cthulhu himself um, uh, <laughs> so you get so he's got two, he's got 11 doom, and rookie you require 13 um, Elder Sign to beat him. But, you know, they're easy ones to beat, but the thing is, the easier they are to beat, the less doom it takes for them to appear. Um, and obviously the hardest one um, to beat is Azatoth, but he's also the ha- hardest one to um I'll show you that. He's the hardest one to um, get to get out um, if he appears, because obviously he's got twelve of them. Where you know Cthulhu and all the other ones that are a little less harder to, a little less easier to bring out, or a little less, a little more easy to bring out, or a little less hard to beat. You know, so it's that, that balanced a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna right. So oops, shoot. I said shoot instead of the other one. That's not like me. Right. So. So, this is Mythos cards, there's quite a pile of Mythos cards, so it's, it's probably going to make each game, it'll get, make, make each game a little bit different. Um, there's your common items, so, um, like Monterey Jack is one of the, um, adve- the investigators, he starts with a single common item and two um, uncommon items. So, uncommon items are things like... Dread Curse of Azatoth. So that lets you. Oh no, that spells. I'm a dick. That spells. There's the uncommon items. There's the uncommon items. So, uncommon items give you extra dice um, to any of your group of rolls. So. So that sort of glory gives the yellow, yellow and the red dice. There's one or two that give you the light yellow and the red dice. I think I mean, that might be the only one actually. That is the only one. So with common items, discard this card instead of losing one sanity. It's for whiskey. After rolling, discard to change one day result to a skull with shotgun. You know that gives you effects. Um, so does some of the spells, but some of the spells also let you lock a dice. Um, well, most of the spells you like, like you lock a dice, or in this Dread Curse of Azatoth, let you lock two dice, which is quite good um, if you need to do certain things. And then you've got investigators, they give you abilities, so during your turn, ignore all standard task requirements. Um, so discard this card of the Ancient One Awakens. Um, so that's Tom Mountain Murphy. Um, and then, uh, then obviously, you've got your um, Mythos. Um, Mythos cards there. So, you know, that's all the cards that you've got in, in the in the box. Um I'll just put these away in it. 
I'll not do a complete setup of what a turn would look like, what I'll do is I'll put out the cards um, that might work. So, if you were starting a game, obviously you'd have all your adventurers or investigators. I'm going to call them adventurers because it's easier for me to remember that term most of the time. So you shuffle the deck and so you put out one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, looking at them right now, that one would have a monster about on it, so I'm going to remove that. Because um, obviously I'm, I'm not punching the monsters out right now. So these three are quite hard to get, I would think, but they don't have a set. Um, set way in which you need to get them but I would think to be honest the Elder Sign one uh, is quite difficult to get as well because it's got the scrolls but um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you um, so I'll turn these on the side right, do this way so so what you would do obviously they would be face down um, so you've got your 6 green dice let's say I don't have any items that help me with dice um, well, we'll, we'll do more than jack um, is the 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 um, uh, so he's got a single common item and two special items. So we'll just we'll just do that. Say say this is his first turn. So he's got whiskey and after rolling this card to change that result to a scroll, which actually after all one discard to defeat one monster. Um, so roll the dice and what we get well we get well we have to if we're gonna do this one, we're gonna do the elder sign. So you see the dice that I've rolled there. Um I've they rolled a peril, a terror, a scroll, a lore and they're investigating shin dice so right away I get that but I lose a stamina point which is fine because now I get to roll all five of my dice uh, again which not that great but um, I now lose Actually, I don't lose that because you can discard that instead of losing a sanity point. So, I don't lose a sanity point. But what I have to do is if I discard that and turn one of the terror dice into that, and I'll, I'd lose a stamina point. So it means. I don't need to lose another dice. Um, and there we go. So on that one turn, I've been able to, because of the cards that I had, which were the Blue Watcher Pyramid, um, Blue Watcher of Pyramid, um, I've got that card which gives me an elder sign it does give me a, a doom token um, but it also gives me two trophies um, and it gives me two investigation tokens so it's actually not a bad one to get you know obviously if you were to do this one so oh, oh. Um, if you 
you would get the you would take this away and put it in the completed pile and then you would bring this up so then the clock would move forward three turns and three and um, okay and then you would have another character which would be um, Mandy Thompson who start nightings are common and a trophy or an investigation um, oh no. so there she is she's got a lantern so she's got a lantern which means every time she rolls dice she uses one of the yellow dice so this doesn't have any locked dice so that's fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt this one with her so I'm going to roll the dice um, so it doesn't matter which one I do um, which way I do it so this is a bit dicey <laughs> because I'm using all of those dice and I've only got two dice left and both of them have already rolled scrolls so I'll roll and there we go that one's completed by her so what she would get would be two spells and a, a common so let's see she's got a common item which helps her immensely because it means she can now red, roll the red dice whenever she goes um, and then she gets two spell items which let's see voice of Ra and you've got shriveling and shriveling means you can hold a dice up so or uh, you can lock a dice which you know could be good um, and then obviously that goes away and the completed pile and then you get to bring this one up So it's, it's quite simple as that. Um, so I am playing a game of this um, this week coming up on Monday. So I'm going to try and get a video of it and we can um, I'll upload it so you can see it get played. I might get two games in and then you'll see it get played. So, I'm going to turn the camera around um, and we'll talk a wee bit more. Hi right, folks, um, so that's how this thing. Um, little unboxing, little bit showing you how to play the game. Um, I'm sure uh, I fucked up a few rules there um, and I probably will when I video it when we're playing up at Falkirk um, on Monday of next week. Um, as I said, in another part of the video, I'm going to try and get it recorded, so you can um, you can see it being played by us. Um, I, I wasn't planning on doing any more um, filming up at Falkirk, but I'm going to see if we can get the the, the room that we do RPGs in to um, do the video in there, because um, I don't think there's going to be that many of us playing. Um, I think it was only four or five years, which is not bad. For, for that size of room um, so with that um, obviously if you're enjoying the channel you enjoyed this video like the channel like like the video and um, share the video and subscribe to the channel um, and keep on getting the unboxings and everything um, if you want to support the channel I currently have a raffle going for a uh, Lieutenant Kelsey's figure, which I'm painting and doing a display base for, um, as well as him being able to be used in um, a game of 40k. Um, obviously, uh, it's £3 per ticket, because it's £3 uh, to buy my coffee on coffee.com. So, I've got a link down below. Um, that you can go to, to to buy me a coffee basically it's £3 um, and every time you, you spend £3 
you get a raffle ticket and you entered every time. If you spend, you buy me 10 coffees, which is 30 quid, um, that's 10 raffle tickets, 10 ways of, 10, 10 chances of winning the figure. Um, if it's later on, if it's after when I fil filmed this, it might be another raffle, but in the coffee, um, on on the page where you, you thingy the coffees, uh, you, you gift the coffees, uh, I suppose, and it says, it's not actually buying me coffee. It, it, on there it'll tell you what I'm currently working on getting with the account. Um, it'll tell you what I'm actually raffling. Um, if it's anything, you got my Instagram account, which you can get from my YouTube account. Um, if you like watching and listening podcasts, I have a podcast that is Yogi Dave's Hobby Podcast. Um, you can get it on Yogi Dave's Hobby dot dot co, or from um, iTunes and whatever um, podcast app that you use. Um, pretty sure it's on Podcast Republic, which is the one I use. Um, if not, it's, you can download the RSS feed and you can add it to your app using the RSS feed. Um, I think that's pretty much it for right now. Uh, I am trying to get one video minimum a week. Um, I'm trying to get one, I do have one podcast um, a week, um, kind of um, laid up for the next month or so. So it's, um, it's all ahead of schedule with the podcasts. Um, hopefully I'll get this edited and put together um, and taking the Zach stuff. I'm annoying the crap out of me out of it because I don't want to, I don't want to look that mean because he's looking at me but um, sad for himself right now. He, he just tore off one of his claws and two of his pads so um, he's been feeling sorry for himself more than recently than normal but you know we'll get him back to, we'll get him back to normal. Um, yeah, I'm rambling a little bit, but um, as I said before, like, share, subscribe, um, and you know, if you like the podcast, share it with your friends, share it with your family, comment on it. Do it for that and the YouTube comment, tell me what you think. If you be a dick about it, then. I will ignore it, but constructive criticism and anything that you've got to say about stuff that will help, I'll take on board. Um, I'll try and change things, but if you be a dick, I'm going to ignore it. Um, and on that, I'm going to say good day, happy hobby. <laughs>